Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma, also known as Made in the Moment. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing Hope Macaulay's brand new yarn that she released. I've barely seen anybody talking about it in my like circles online, but when I saw that she had announced this, I knew that I had to try it. So I did buy some of her yarn and we're gonna be talking about that today. I've made a couple projects with it. I'm gonna give you my review. Is it worth it? Is it not? Before we go any further, make sure you go subscribe to my second channel, Emma in the Moment. Go watch all my videos on there. They're very interesting. They are craft related drama and I've been told that they're very good background noise to crochet and knit to. So go watch those as well after you watch this video. If you're online and you knit or crochet, you probably know Hope Macaulay, but let me just give you a little rundown of who she is and what the brand is. Hope is a 27 year old fashion designer. She went to fashion school, graduated in 28, and then created the brand Hope Macaulay in 2020. Hope Macaulay quickly skyrocketed to popularity due to the brand's PR strategy of sending sweaters to very, very famous people, basically. The brand is self-described dopamine dressing and they focus on surrealism and these like dreamlike quality knits. It's a very small Northern Ireland based business. Hope employs 17 knitters to create these sweaters and most of the stock is made to order. While the brand has gained popularity, it has also received a small amount of internet backlash due to the nature of the materials that Hope uses. Everything is sustainably sourced and certified in the correct ways. I'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into like the actual yarn that I got. But some of the criticism comes from the fact that Hope uses roving, which is basically an unspun version of yarn. And it's pretty hard to wash. You really can only spot clean it. You can't machine wash it. According to their website, they recommend professional dry cleaning or spot cleaning. In their garment care section, they also talk about how you should avoid hanging up your knits and how you should avoid wearing any jewelry when you wear these sweaters because it can snag on the pieces. A lot of these things are kind of standard for knitwear pieces where if you have a hand knit, if you have something that may be a little bit more delicate, then you're going to have to take care of it a little bit differently than you might some of your other pieces. Hope's biggest online controversy actually is something that I was unintentionally involved in. Earlier this year, Hope Macaulay released these hair bows that were literally just a chain of crochet, something that would take an experienced crocheter or even a beginner crocheter about two minutes to make. They were made with the same roving and the brand was charging $80 for these. So I saw that they had posted these on Instagram. I screenshotted it, sent it to a group message and was like, wow, this is kind of crazy. Like there, this is sort of a lot of money for what this is. And I will say, companies can charge whatever they want to charge. And if people buy it, then that's fine. There's all sorts of luxury brands that charge for things that aren't necessarily exactly in line with the product. If you have strong branding, you can kind of sell anything for any price you want. So then I made a TikTok, but my main goal was just to increase a little bit of awareness around the material itself. And personally, I just don't think it's a great product. And some people may say that this is a silly hill to die on. And I think it is too. It's not something that I would like back with my life and soul. I just thought that this was like probably not the best use of people's money and was just letting people know that these were not really worth the money. Again, just all my opinion. A few other people made some TikToks and pretty unceremoniously, she just took them off the website. I feel kind of bad that I started unintentional beef with Hope, but I do wanna say all of that so that you know where I'm coming from and what bias I already have. But that's why I wanted to make this video because I saw she put out some yarn and it's time for me to tell you about it. So at the time of ordering, she had two different yarn options on her site, the chunky wool and the colossal wool. Now there's another version of the colossal wool that is like an acrylic based dead stock blend. So first let's talk about the chunky wool. The chunky wool is available in eight colors and it is a merino wool. They source the yarn from Uruguay and it is RWS and OEKO Tex 100 certified. I don't know how you're supposed to say that, which basically means that it has been tested for toxic chemicals and it doesn't have any. And then RWS is the responsible wool standard. The responsible wool standard is a certification for wool farmers and sellers that aims to improve the welfare of sheep and the land they graze on. The RWS standard requires certification achievers must meet rigorous animal welfare, land management, and social requirements. This helps brands and retailers ensure their wool suppliers use ethical and sustainable sourcing practices. RWS has provided the standard that recognizes farming best practices and ensures a strong chain of custody for certified materials through the supply chain. The wool is sourced from non mul Mule-ized. Mule-ized? Mules. Mules. The yarn is produced from non-mules 
flock. Basically, this means it's cruelty free. The sheep are not harmed in the collection of the wool. These are available as 100 gram skeins, which is 65 meters in length. The 100 gram skein costs 16 US dollars. And then the other yarn is the Colossal Wool. This is available in three different colors. There's that dead stock acrylic Colossal Wool I was telling you that is a fourth color, but this one is just patchwork pink, coastal blue, and paradise green. The Colossal Wool is made of 100% Corydale wool, sourced from New Zealand. This yarn is also sourced from non musling flocks and is also O-E-K-O-O-E-K-O Tex 100 certified. It doesn't say it's RWS certified. The Colossal Wool is available in two different sizes, the 200 grams and 500 grams. 200 grams costs 20 US dollars and 500 grams costs you 83 US dollars. The website doesn't have the yardage on it, but I think that the yarn sleeves do. So give me a second. Okay, so the 200 gram skein is approximately nine meters in length. This is very, very low yardage and I'll talk about this more later. And if I've done my math correctly, that would mean that the 500 gram skein has just over 22 meters. I think a lot of the pushback on any criticism that Hope Macaulay gets from the knitting community is that like, oh, well, she's not catering to this audience of people who hand knit things, which is true. But now that she is branching out into wanting to market to actual knitters, it doesn't make sense to me that she wouldn't include all of the information that is standard on a yarn label. There's a lot of reasons why it took me so long to finish this video, but part of the reason is because I was waiting to see if they would release the patterns so that I could sort of review those in this video too. Since the release of the yarn last month, the pattern page has just said coming soon. There still aren't any patterns listed on the site. They don't even say like what the patterns are going to be when they do release them. So at the time of filming, they hadn't posted about it, but today they just posted an update that the Sparkle Puff Sleeve Chunky Knit Top will be releasing on Friday, September 22nd at 3 p.m. Now we know. So Hope's Wool launched on July 13th. I didn't see it until about August. That's why I was saying it launched last month, so oops. But as soon as I found out about it, I went on the website, looked through, and picked out two different yarns with the intention of making a bag and a bralette, sort of in the style of Hope Macaulay. Again, I was hoping that the patterns would be out by the time I got the yarn, so then I could buy the patterns and then make one of them. But I sort of just followed along with some pictures and made some tweaks on my own, which I'll talk about more later. There's also not any information about what weight the yarn is, and there's just these symbols. This looks like it's meant to be hand washed. This means no washing machine and then no iron. But if we remember from what the website says, it says spot clean. So I think it would be good if you are using a, a material that is delicate to at least put some warning on the label because people might not look at the website that closely. Another product that they offer is off cuts. And these are basically just a bunch of scraps. A bunch of scraps! I think in theory, this is a great idea. I was thinking about ordering these, but then I just, I knew I wouldn't have a use for them really. And I didn't wanna just buy them just to review them and see what it was like. So if anyone else buys this and actually has a use for it and then wants to tell me about their experience, then please do. So I added this yarn to my cart. I bought one skein of the Colossal Wool and then two skeins of the Chunky Wool, which in retrospect, I should have done the opposite because I ended up running out of the Colossal Wool really fast and having a lot of the Chunky Wool left over. My subtitle for the order was 53 US dollars and shipping came out to $33. I'm not sure if there's a flat fee. It's not a flat fee, by the way. It goes up the more you order, which also makes sense. I know international shipping can get expensive and I know they're a small business. So part of me understands the shipping cost being that high, but at the same time, that is quite a lot. I got my yarn and I'm gonna unbox it now. So I ordered this on August 7th. Today is August 17th. It actually arrived like two days ago. So it took a little bit less than 10 days to get here, which is pretty good considering it is internationally shipped. Let's open her up. There's a really cute little postcard thing. Thank you so much for your order, Hope's Wool. And then there's this cute like custom tissue paper. I've seen them use this to box up like other orders as well, so. Cute that they are using the Hope Macaulay stuff. And here's what I got. Oops. <laughs> so first off, we have the Colossal Wool. 
Just on like first inspection, this is way less soft than I thought it was gonna be. But it like literally already looks like this is starting to like pill. I don't know if you can tell too much. I was planning on making a bag with this and I'm not sure if it's gonna be enough. It'll have to be, I might have to do something else for the strap and I'll just make the body of the bag this. Maybe that'll make it more um, structurally sound anyway. I'm trying not to be a hater yet, but that's just my initial reaction is that it's not super soft. This one is 100% merino wool and this is much softer. This is what I expected that one to be. And I guess that's just like me not knowing my fibers well enough to know that that's probably just what that feels like. And then this color is Neptune blue. I really like this color. This is like one of my favorite shades of blue ever. So I'm actually really excited about this. I'm gonna try and make uh, the bralette, I think, with this one. I have these two, so should be good. That is the yarn. Okay, we're gonna start with the bag, but I do just wanna show you how wide the yarn is. These are the biggest needles I have. They're 15 millimeters. So I'm gonna try and knit on these. I hope they're big enough. Probably I would need like 20 or 25 millimeter needles, but like, I don't even know where to find those. All right, so we got our first row cast on. This is comically large. And I'm just gonna knit up in a stockinette, which is gonna curl immediately. And I'm sure that's gonna be annoying, but. So when I got the yarn, I first started with the bag because I thought that that would be a little bit quicker to make. And I struggled so much to figure out the best way to work with the yarn. Like I said, the Colossal Wool has no recommended needle size. I'm guessing that means that they just use their like hands to do it. That's what I ended up having to do. I tried some needles, but they just like did not work. I could not get the tension. I couldn't even like knit. The yarn's just too thick for that. But the tag doesn't have any indication of what, how to work with the yarn, which I think is a big oversight when it comes to who your audience is. So the first thing I made was the bag and I was really disappointed with the yardage of this skein. I knew that it wasn't gonna be a lot as soon as I started working with it, but I ended up having to really cut down and start over several times to downsize the bag even more, which made it like even less usable than I already thought it would be. My finished panel ended up only being able to be five stitches wide. I feel like it weirdly looks better on camera than it does in person, but I think if I zoom in, you can kind of see how it's already starting to like fuzz. So the plan is to sort of sew it up like this and then I'll chain a strap out of this. And I kind of want to do something else. Like Hope has this technique where she does like really big like over stitching. So I might try and figure out if there's a way I can do that. Just something to make the strap and the rest of the bag like tied together a little bit more. I do have one idea that I think might be fun. So I'll try that out as well. <laughs> I did not do the best job of seaming this up. I will admit, I don't really work with these materials. So this side looks pretty good, although you can kind of see the stitches. And then this side is like kind of not great, but I sort of don't really know what my other options are. I think what I'm gonna try and do is weave this end in. Actually, I'll just do it right now because I'm gonna use my fingers. Just like weave the end in to cover up my messy stitching. A little bit like obviously this would have been better if I had the same color yarn to stitch it over with but that's that's on me it's not their fault and already so much better so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the straps I'm gonna double this yarn so it's thicker and doesn't like fall apart when I try and carry this and then I think I'm gonna do like a little like weave in a bow on here because I think that would look cute so let's do it this looks so stupid. So here is how the bag turned out. After this video, I think I'm going to unravel this and try and figure out some other way to use this or just see if anyone's interested in the roving and using that to spin with because there's just no way that I can use this bag. The fact that it's really small means that I literally can't fit anything inside of it. I fit my sunglasses case and my tiny Sony camera in there. 
separately, not even at the same time. So it's just really not a functional thing. Even if it was a little bit larger too, this kind of material is not great for bags. So personally, I would pass on purchasing one of those bags or purchasing this yarn, honestly. I had a pretty bad experience working with it and I was planning on doing a wear test. I had this whole grandiose plan that I would bring the bag with me on my trip to Europe. I would wear, wear it around and this video would be a little bit more of like a vlog too, where I would show you like, oh, here's me with the bag in Edinburgh. Here's me with the bag in London. But when it came down to it, after I'd packed my suitcase, which was just a carry on for two weeks, I just could not justify bringing this monstrosity with me. I'm not calling Hope's designs or her yarn a monstrosity. I'm just saying what I was able to piece together with the yarn that I bought, which is on me. I didn't necessarily buy the right amount of yarn. Turned out, in my opinion, not that cute. All right, so I'm gonna start on the bralette. This yarn also does not have a recommended needle size. These are the two needles I'm choosing between. I think I'm kind of leaning towards these ones, honestly, mostly just because the cord is longer and it will actually like go around my chest because I'm gonna do this in the round. Hmm. These are 10 millimeters and I think these are 15. So I'll probably try with both and then see what, what happens. I finished the bralette. I meant to take more clips of myself making it, but I just can't remember to do that. I did take a few clips on my phone for some reason, but, but here's what it looks like. I am wearing a bralette underneath it because I don't love the feeling of like bare wool on my skin. Actually, it's not that bad. It's really not, it's not super itchy. It is a chunky bralette, but it's not too bad. My plan is to wear this for the rest of the day and then update you on what it looks like, the pilling situation. I really don't think you can see it. I'll take some close-up shots in a second and like overlay them over this, but already just from like knitting with it, it's a little fuzzy. That's kind of, I feel like what happens with these kinds of yarns. So I don't know how much of that can be avoided. But the good thing about this is that I have this, all this yarn left over. I just like incorrectly estimated how much yarn I would need for both of these projects, which is not shocking. I feel like that happens to me all the time. Now the bralette, I did actually bring with me to Europe and I did wear it while I was there and I forgot to film anything because most of the days it was too hot to wear it. And then on the, some of the days it was actually too cold because I went up to Scotland and it got freezing. And of course I only brought one sweater that wasn't that warm. So I actually did wear this as a layer underneath my clothes while I was there, literally to keep me warm. And I have to say this one did hold up a lot better than I thought it was going to. I am gonna wash it and then I'll update you on that as well. But overall, really not that bad. Here are my final thoughts on the yarn and my recommendations. For me personally, the Colossal Wool is an absolute no buy. I can't imagine any project that you would really want to work on with this. If you were to be making one of Hope's cardigans, I think you would need about 10 skeins of this, which is gonna cost you around $220. And personally, I just think that's a little bit too much to spend on yarn for a sweater that you're gonna have to make yourself and then only be able to wear a little bit before it starts getting really pilled. Now, this is just my personal opinion. Obviously, if you wanna try it, you can, but I'm saving you a little grief. I think this is just not the best material to work with, honestly. And I was pretty disappointed with the, the softness of this one as well. It's very scratchy. I couldn't imagine wearing something like this as a, a top, but you know, everybody has different tastes and I'm not gonna say you can't, but the one interesting thing too about this is that I do feel like it looks better on camera than it looks in person. In person, I can see so much more of the pilling, but when I hold it up on camera, it actually doesn't look that bad. And then as far as the chunky wool goes, 
I think it's not bad. And I think if you live in the UK and you want to try it out, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. I think there are better options for what you're gonna get with this. And especially if you live in the US, it's just not worth the $30 shipping. The chunky wool is quite a bit softer than the colossal wool though. So I will give it to that. As far as wool rovings that I've worked with, it is one of the softer ones, but honestly, it's pretty comparable to the We Are Knitters Wool and the Gang type of vibe. It's at a similar price point too, and they have more color options. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of We Are Knitters, but I have to admit their wool is a little bit nicer than this one. But these are just my opinions. If you do end up using this yarn, let me know what you think. Had you heard about this until I made the video? Am I accidentally giving her a lot of promo by talking about this? Um, I don't know. In my opinion, this yarn is just not worth your money and I think you would be better off buying from other sources, but that's just me. Those are just my thoughts. No hate to hope, of course. I think that what she's done is inspiring a lot of people and really getting knitwear out there on a huge platform. And while of course I have my criticisms of her and her brand, it's always easier to criticize from the sidelines than it is from actually inside running your own small sustainable business. So I wanna give her props for doing that and for trying this out. We'll see sort of what happens with this. I don't know if it'll be a limited release collection. I don't know how their sales are doing. I don't know any of this stuff, but if you have tried it, let me know what your thoughts were. Let me know what you made. And when she does release the patterns, I'll probably make some sort of update, whether that's on here or on Instagram or TikTok. So make sure to go follow me on both of those if you wanna stay in the loop. If you liked this video, like, subscribe, comment, do all that. And also I'm gonna be releasing a pattern soon, the mesh button up. One of my friends, Taylor, modeled for this and the pictures turned out amazing. And I have a few other pattern ideas that will be sort of slowly coming out, but I'm also working on a pretty big project that I'll tell you more about in the coming weeks and months but I might be slowing down my pattern releases just for a little bit because of that. Thank you to Scout, Jade M, and Janela for supporting me on Patreon. If you want to support me on Patreon and see some bonus content then go ahead and click the link in my description. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.